Welcome to this week's Empowered Living. I'm your host, Kenny Collier. I'm the Associate Pastor of Spirit of Life Church, and this is our third series that we are doing on Empowered Living. The first one we went through was being rooted and grounded in who we are in Christ Jesus, so as to be equipped and go out and impact the world for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. The last series we looked at was uh, the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, how he ministered healing and how, minist- or how healing was received by those who came to Jesus, noting that healing is God's will and all those who came to Jesus were healed. Not a single one was sent away unhealed. Two, week- two weeks ago, we looked at and began a series on science that is confirmed by the Bible. Better yet, how science is just catching up with the truth of the Bible that has already uh, spoken these things into existence. Week number one, we looked at how dinosaurs are in the Bible, created on day six with all the other land animals just like man. And then last week, we looked at race and how there is but one race, the human race. Genetically speaking, all scientists agree we are, there's more variation between one Caucasian and another than there is between one who's African American or Caucasian. 99.99 identical genetic information written with the same language that God created in Adam uh, all those years ago. This week I want to take a look at basic scientific truths found in the Bible but yet weren't discovered by man until thousands or hundreds of years later. We're only going to look at five this week and continue with the, uh, in, the, in the following week. Fact number one is this, the earth's free float in space. You can find this in Job 26, verse 7. 1,500 years before Jesus Christ, it was believed that the earth was on the back of giant animals like a giant turtle. You can find drawings and illustrations to this fact. At the same time, when this was the belief, Job said that the earth hangs on nothing. Science would not confirm that the earth hangs on nothing in space until 1650, over 3,000 years After it was already written in Job. So science is just catching up. It took them 3,000 years, but they finally made this great discovery, which is already written for us in the book of Job, chapter 26. Science fact number two. You need to wash your hands with running water. Boy, we all know that today. Not too long ago, I went on a cruise. And not only were you washing hands and running water, but every 20 feet, it seems like there was a, a hand sanitizing station. We understand germs today. We understand the reason and the necessity for wa- uh, washing our hands with running water and with soap. But that wasn't always known. We didn't always know about germs and, and microorganisms and things of that nature. In 1845, right, 20 years before the Civil War, Agnes Samelweis, a young doctor in Vienna was horrified at the death rate of women who gave birth in hospitals. As many as 30% of these women died after childbirth. Samuel noted that doctors would do autopsies of patients who died, then without washing their hands would go straight to the next room and do an examination on an expectant mother because... The presence of microscopic organisms was not yet known. Imagine that. You're doing an autopsy in exam room A because this mother died giving childbirth. You, you want this woman who's expectant to live, and so you're doing this autopsy to find out why she died. Without washing your hands, you walk into examination room B, and you do uh, uh, an examination on an expectant mother. There was no known knowledge of microorganisms at the time. 30% death rate. Samuel Weiss insisted, he insisted that these doctors would begin to wash their hands before they would do the examinations. And the death rate dropped immediately to 2%. It's a 28% drop. Over 3,000 years earlier, it was written in Leviticus chapter 15 verse 13 says this, And when he who has an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number himself seven days to be cleansed and wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in running water and he shall be clean. Now, we know doctors wash their hands under running water. It's amazing how many lives could have been saved, how many deaths could have been foregone if doctors, men of science, would have just read the Bible for the truth that it is 
and would have been washing their hands under, under running water. It's just a needless amount of death and destruction. But this is one of the ways the enemy comes at us. He comes at us to deceive us. He comes at us and to puff up with knowledge. But here the word, the God's word, which is truth, has always been there. And it's there for us to glean from if we will only believe it as the truth for which it is. Fact number three in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. It says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. Science now knows this to be true. With a simple blood test, you can find out life's information. You can find out the health of your flesh in your blood. You can find out information on your kidneys, on your thyroid, on your liver, and on your heart. It can reveal conditions of disease like cancer and diabetes and AIDS and coronary heart disease. But science didn't come to know that the life was in the blood till about 150 years ago to 120 years ago. 120 years ago, they were still practicing a process called bloodletting. Bloodletting uh, caused many to die. And what they would do is they would cut the arteries or cut the veins in the arms, or they would use leeches to draw out the blood of a patient, believing that this would help them to get better. When George Washington, our first president, was sick, it was all, all when everything was said and done, they said they let out, they bled him out 80 ounces of his blood over a 12-hour period. This is about 40% of George Washington's total blood volume, blood volume they spilled. This is probably what ended up killing him. Now we know that sick people need blood, so we give them blood transfusions to replenish the life of the flesh. More than a thousand years before Jesus Christ, the Bible stated this uh, recently discovered biological truth. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Fact number four. The Bible tells us that the earth is round. Yes, it may be hard to believe. The Bible says it in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22. It says, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. The word circle there is a Hebrew word for circle or compass. Indicating something that is spherical or round or arched. Not something that is flat or square. Isaiah was written between 740 to 680 B.C. Aristotle, the great philosopher, the great science man that he was, theorized that the earth was round by watching the masts of ships sink down over the horizon. He also studied that during an eclipse over the moon that the shadow of the earth was curved on the moon. He could have saved himself a lot of time if he had just read the, the Bible and believed the word of God to be true, which stated this fact 300 years earlier before he made the same conclusion. Another 2,000 years later, at a time when many in science still believed the earth was flat, it was scriptures that inspired Christopher Columbus to sail around the world, believing it to be spherical in shape. And then finally, fact number five. In Psalm 8, 8, a, a, a scientist named Matthew Morey read this. And he considered, he's now considered the father of oceanography. He noticed that the words in Psalm 8, 8 said this. It said that there are paths in the sea. This was written almost 2,800 years ago when, when Matthew Morey was reading this. And he said it like this. We need to have faith like Matthew Morey. He said it like this. If God's word says that there are paths in the sea, then I'm going to set out and I'm going to find them because God's word is true. This is, should be our approach to science. Our approach should be the, the revealed truth of God's word and then go find it. So for example, when God said that all things reproduce after their own kind, then we need to go find out that to be true. God's word states that it's true, therefore it is true, so let's find out how one kind reproduces after itself. And now we know that it's done this through things like the cell cycle, through fertilization, through sperm, through egg, and all these different ways that we know the reproduction of organisms occurs. That is reproducing after their kind. So Matthew Morey took God at his word, and he went looking for these paths, and he discovered the cold and the warm continental currents. His book on oceanography is considered a basic text and still is used in colleges and universities today. He set out with the word of God as the truth and the starting point. That's what we need to do. We need to stop thinking that man who was fallible. How do we know man is fallible? Uh, David said, I was conceived in sin out of his mother's womb. 
Why? Because we have fallen under the curse of sin because of Adam and Eve. But there's a blessed redemption in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through His shed blood, through His death, and through His resurrection. So let's look at God's word as true. And when the word of God says something about the natural world around us, let's believe that to be true first. And then we can expect science to confirm God's word.